Hey everyone, it's Mike the Scrapping Guy here, and I recently received an email and someone was asking me how to change a black and white photo into a color photo. And um, a lot of times people want to change, you know, a color photo in a black and white, which is real simple, or sepia tone, which is very simple. But this was one of the first emails I've received, somebody saying they have a black and white old vintage photo, and they want to kind of colorize it, add a little bit of color to it. And um, one of the things that was interesting, if you remember many years ago, I believe it was Ted Turner was trying to change a lot of the old movies into color, uh, coloring them, uh, the old black and white movies. And we're kind of going to kind of do the same concept here. So what I have in front of me is a old vintage photo, and it's actually a little bit of a sepia tone right now. So the first thing I want to do is go up to Enhance and choose Adjust Color and remove color. And now you can see that we actually have it as a plain black and white photograph. And what I'm going to do now is use a tool that you may or may not have used before. And it's actually the color replacement tool. Now normally your tools would be set up, it probably just has the regular paintbrush tool. And if I use the paintbrush tool when I started painting, you can see that it kind of goes over and just replaces everything that I'm doing with that particular color that's chosen in the swatches. So let me control Z my way out of that. But what I'm going to do here instead is I'm going to choose the color replacement tool, which is down here. And you can see it is a brush with a little square around it. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to go and I'm going to change the skin tones to make it more, look a little more natural. So I'm going to go over my color swatches, click on them, click on the top swatch, I'm sorry, and go up to kind of the yellow and try to choose a, a skin tone of what you might see um, in your family. So we're going to, you might have to experiment with this a couple of times. I'm just going to go and choose something, say, like there. And let me go ahead and I'm going to zoom in a little bit. And if you look, when I have the um, color replacement tool selected, you can see at the very top there's like mode, limits, tolerance, and anti-alias. And what I want to do is, the important thing I want to do is check the tolerance. I'm going to lower that down to maybe around, uh, say, 10%. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to paint and in, uh, inside different areas of the face without going on the outside. It, it almost kind of finds the edges. And if you look at this a brush, it actually has a little plus mark in the middle. We can adjust the size of the brush like a normal paintbrush by using the uh, bracket tools on your keyboard. And what I can do now is if I go and I start painting, you can see that even though my uh, the circle is over into the black area. It's only going right up to the edge of where the uh, where the gentleman's face is. So let me go ahead and paint this a little bit. And what I'm going to do, just by painting a little bit here, I'm going to kind of zoom out to see how natural that is. Actually, it doesn't look very natural at all. Let me control Z all the way out there. I'm going to choose a different color. And one of the things about the color replacement tool is that it leaves the shadows and the um, the different gradients or gra uh, grays and everything kind of behind it. So you don't lose that kind of quality of the shade, but we are actually changing the color of the skin. So let's go ahead and try that one. And start painting here. It looks a little bit better. And like I said, you can experiment uh, to see what works best for you. As you can see, it's just kind of finding the edges here. I'm going to do it kind of quickly. Obviously, if you're doing it on your own project, you want to take your time with it. <clears throat> Excuse me, and make sure that everything is properly done. Choose the ear here. Go. And we go ahead and zoom around the eyes, zoom into the eyes. And I'm going to make that brush a little bit smaller to kind of make sure I get that area here. There we go. 
And we'll go to zoom back out and take a look at that, see how that looks. It doesn't look too bad. And we're going to do the same thing with the female. But this one I'm going to choose a little bit of a lighter color. And start, let's see, make the brush a little bit bigger. Start painting hers in. This is actually kind of neat to do with a lot of the older photos, and they uh, they kind of make them look a little even a little more uh, vintage. If you've ever seen any actual Keller photos from, you know, back in the 1940s, you can uh, see that it almost has the same kind of look to it because they certainly don't have the quality of the Keller um, uh, printing that they have nowadays. So we got a little bit of a look here. There we go, that looks pretty good. Let me zoom in on our eyes. So I can kind of go around them a little bit better. And like I said, I'm kind of doing this a little bit in a hurry. Just because it's kind of a tutorial. You would certainly want to take your time a little bit more. Go ahead and zoom out. Whoop. There we go. Ah, we're zooming out. Okay, that's not too bad. Now let's see what we can do with the hair. Choose a different color for that. Let's try kind of a darker color. Maybe even kind of a darker brown color. Let's see what happens with that. Doesn't look too bad. So you could imagine if you were one of the people that was in charge of or working on colorizing those old movies, you'd have to do this for every frame in the uh, in the movie, which would be very painstaking. Which is obviously one of the reasons why it costs so much money, also. Actually, looks like I got to a little bit more on the edge of his uh, of his face there. And you could even do different shading too. Actually, that color was more for the the woman. Let me go back and maybe kind of make it for the guy here. Here we go. All right, let me zoom out of here and take a look at it. That's not too bad. Now let's go with her hair. Let's try something. I'm not sure how this is going to look because I haven't done it before. Let's make her hair kind of like a blonde, kind of a blondish color. And we'll see what happens with that. I don't really like that. It looks a little too fake. Try it a little bit lighter. Yeah, it might not be too bad. And make the brush a little bit bigger so I can get it done a little bit quicker here. Once again, that tolerance being at only set at 10% is keeping me from going too much, uh, too much on into the edges of like her face. Uh, and actually the background is I have to be a little careful on the background because it's sort of the same color but uh, it does a pretty good job with finding those edges down here alright let me go zoom out I'm not sure how that blonde looks but you get the idea like I said you want to experiment different uh, with different things and it looks like I need to get her arms. I guess I should have done that when I had the uh, the color set before, but we go ahead and uh, change that. Whoops, that's her dress. Here we go. The arms for the woman.
And now one of the tough parts is going to be the coloring the eyes. This guy here looks like he probably had blue eyes, so let me see if I can find a, a good shade of blue that we can use for that. And I mainly want to get it inside here. That looks a little too much. A little bit lighter here. And let me zoom out and see how that looks. Yeah, it's not too bad. I mean, it is a colorized photo. And it looks like the woman's eyes are probably more of a brown color. So let's see how we can get these to look. Whoop. And I'm just putting that little plus sign over the lighter gray area of the eyes just so it only fills in those areas okay yeah, we'll do one more thing let's go ahead and make his tie kind of a red color maybe he had a red tie back then oh some more pink Pick a little bit darker red Okay, so there you, there you kind of have it, and I could go in further and kind of change the color of the background and maybe make her dress a different color, but I just kind of wanted to show you this, this tool that you might have never used before. It's the color replacement tool, and it allows you to paint over top of grayish areas while it'll keep the shadows and the, uh, the gray areas underneath of it intact. So it kind of gives that colorization uh, without losing the um, actual quality of the photograph. So there you go. Go ahead and uh, pull out some of your old vintage photos and have some fun changing them into different colors.